opportunity to be here this morning with you to share an interesting topic that I believe is very relevant to the generation of tomorrow. Today, when I decided to talk, I was thinking what would be something of interest. And I thought nothing more than technology, because I think it is shaping our future, it's shaping the way we do things, and it has definitely been disruptive. So when we talk about technologies, basically we talk about different types of technologies. There's four types of technologies. There's a sustaining technology. There's an incremental technology. There's a radical technology. And there is a disruptive technology. If we talk about sustaining technology, then we're talking about the technology that we need to sustain from day to day, from year to year. And we're all familiar with all the new upgrades that we get on our phones, the new versions of Windows. These are all necessary to keep learning from one generation to the next and sustain our technology. When we talk about incremental technology, we're talking about the new technologies that we can take further, combine. This iPhone, when it first launched, did not have a camera did not have the music on it, and today it has a phone, it has a camera, it has a combination of everything, and this is again definitely incremental. When we talk about radical, I think a radical is the iPhone itself. Uber is a radical also technology. If we talk about disruptive, to me disruptive is a technology that has absolutely disrupted the way we do things. It just changed absolutely everything we do in our everyday. So what's the disruptive technology that we want to talk about today? The one I picked is the internet. And again, what is the internet? The internet is millions of hardware, servers, computers that are spread everywhere in the world. And this connectivity enables people to get on these servers and be able to communicate with one another. You can only imagine that we have eight billion people on this universe and four billion people today are connected through these servers and computers and this is to me is absolutely significant and it's absolutely disruptive. Again you might say why is it disruptive when I'm talking to the new graduates here maybe to them it's not very disruptive because this technology is almost 20 years old and for all of them, for all of you guys, this technology is something you're born with. It has not disrupted anything. You grew up with a phone, you grew up with the internet. I can tell you that for me it was very disruptive. I'm 50 years of age, I lived 25 years of my life offline, and I lived 25 years of my life online. So I can definitely assure you that I have witnessed the disruption. Just to give you small examples, when I was sitting in your seats and when I was about to graduate, Back in 86, and I went to college, I spent a lot of time at libraries looking at books, copying books, making papers as I went and did my research. I was communicating with my parents through mail. I was waiting for the mailman to bring those letters so I can connect with my parents. I was queuing for hours to get access to a computer in my college so I can type my paper or do my research. You know, the only way of communication obviously was a landline. And believe it or not, yes, I did grow up watching TV with only two channels, one in Arabic, one in English. It started at 6 o'clock, finished by 10 o'clock, and we were extremely excited when they extended it to midnight. Now this is, to me, is the old way of doing things, and boom, fast forward 20 years, and what are we talking about? I no longer have to queue for a lab. I'm connected everywhere I go. As I stand in front of you, I have my iPhone. I have my digital wallet, I have my digital wear, I got my watch, I feel I'm totally connected through the internet, I'm not missing a beat. I can actually do all my work, everything I need to do to carry my everyday routine can happen through this device. This is incredible. What technology has been enabling, enabling us to do is something that even 20 or 30 years ago, I did not actually could imagine. When they, talk, when they asked us back in high school to imagine what the future looked like, I drew flying cars. You know, I think now we have more than flying cars. We will have flying cars, but we have the drones. It's as close as it gets to flying cars as it gets. So again, things are going very fast and things are progressing. 
If we just hone down on Egypt and we realize there's almost 95 million people that have access to smartphones and we have 59 million who are actually connected to the internet. Almost 50% of the population is connected and I said 50% of the whole global world population is connected to the internet. There's 4 billion people that we can connect to and there's 4 billion yet to connect. So there's a lot of connectivity and this is again mind-boggling. If we look at what people connect to, obviously we know, I'm not here to lecture or tell you what people connect here in Egypt for, but their beloved applications are social media applications. Everybody is, has almost a Facebook account, everybody is connected to the YouTube. In reality, in Egypt, we're spending more than seven hours a day connected to the internet. Out of those seven hours, we spend almost three and a half hours connected to social media. So the internet is a huge revolution in connectivity, in speed. You can only imagine the speed of how information is traveling back and forth. With this type of uh, practice, I'm personally becoming very impatient. I'm the guy who used to go to the library and spend hours looking at books, looking through microfish to get my articles to copy them. And now I'm very, very impatient when I try to look up something and it takes a few seconds to download and I become frustrated. So the internet is also changing the way we anticipate, the way we want to live our life. Now we want speed at everything. We want speed, 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 and more and more and more connectivity. But again, when we talk about the internet, it's really a lot more than social media. I'm not gonna bore you, I think you all know what the internet does, what are the enablers of the internet. But again, just to kind of remind us, we do a lot more than social media on the internet. With the COVID, the only way I managed to continue with my work uninterrupted is by connectivity. We managed to do everything through emails, we connected on Teams, we connected through Google Docs, we did everything, we collaborated, and we managed to run the business completely uninterrupted. And today, we actually challenge why we need to be physically present in the office, something that we never really thought about for a long, for a long time, although it was there. But when it came to it, and we tried it, and it worked, and now it's changing the whole office environment and how it's gonna look in a few years. So again, as I stand here with my phone, if I just look through a lot of those applications, I can tell you that I cannot even envision living without my, without my phone. I can rent my apartment, I can collect my funds, I can do my banks, I can do everything I need to do through this little device that is connecting me and making my life super, super easy. At work, we love being connected because for the first time, we're able to listen to what consumers want. We don't have to engage in a lot of consumer research that we used to do in the past. We still do, but now with connectivity, we're actually able to see what people do. We know where they like to shop. We know which websites they go to. We know what they shop for. We know what time they shop. We know what type of families they have. We have their whole data basically at the tip of our fingers. And this helps us, again, cater to our consumers and kind of push for them what they like to see and what they like to see. Again, when you go home, you know, obviously we all watch Netflix, so I'm not watching those two channels and I have plenty of TV to watch, uninterrupted. Again, not only that, with the internet, now we have a smart internet. There's something called the IoT, or the Internet of Things correct, and what that is. Now things can be actually talking to the internet. Not humans, but your fridge can be talking to the internet. Your fridge can order your groceries. You know, your Alexa at home can order lots of things for you. Can play music, can tell you a lot about your mood. Maybe it can tell you a lot more. So again, we're not just beyond the regular internet, but we're actually went even beyond into smart, smart connectivity. And again, that one of the bigger topics, obviously, is social media. I'm not gonna talk about it, we're all very familiar with our social media, we're all very happy when, when we're posting, when we're connecting with our friends. You know, when I post, I also get excited. I wanna see how my post is doing, I wanna see who's looking, who's sharing it, I wanna see if my friends like it, and again, if I go to my Facebook, I wanna connect with my friends, and as a father, I wanna always connect with my family, and this is only possible with this great technology. 
And again, one last part I'll talk about, obviously e-commerce. We're all very familiar as well, how this is making life very easy, and it changed and created a lot more jobs. Today, if you have anything you want to sell, you're able to sell it online. You don't need to have a physical shop. And again, you can transact with e-commerce. People can be buying and selling stuff online. And again, there's a world of opportunities with internet. I think we're convinced there's nothing better than this technology. This is a great technology. But having said that, the question is, are we hooked to this technology? Can we live without it? How is it going to look if we don't have this technology? Not that we will ever give it up, because it's there, and you know, in life we continue to progress with technology, we do things better and better, and there's going to be better technology down the line. But the question is, are we hooked to this technology, and what does that mean? Can we live without this technology? What is the negative impact of internet, and specifically if we want to talk about social media, because this is, has taken a lot of our people's time and a lot of research on it. So the question, how often do we check our phones every day? And how much urge do we have to check our posts? And how obsessed are we with our likes? There's been a lot of research, a lot of different uh, research on how many times people pick up their phone, but people are picking up their phone anywhere from 50 to 100 times a day. And this is quite a bit. So you're never leaving that phone behind. That's basically your safety, your safety net, and you're always reaching to your phone, you're always getting your phone, you're always checking your emails. You're basically connected wherever you are 24 seven. So, are you impacted? Again, there's been a lot of research on this. A lot of people have different opinions on the impact of this new technology, this disruptive technology, and how it changed the way we do things. We talk about the positive, but the question is, are you impacted? Are you impacted? People are talking about censorship. Do you want to be censored? Do you want to have the ability to put everything on the internet and not be censored? In the old days, if you want to publish something, you have to put something in a paper, in a newspaper, go through an editor-in-chief who checks it, either puts it in, puts it out. Today, anything can go on the internet. There's freedom to put whatever you want to post. You can post your own things, your own beliefs. Nobody's going to censor you. Some governments try to censor. Is that good or bad? Is that for you? Are you really addicted? Are you able to live without? Can you give up your phone for a day? Can you give it up for two hours and continue to be happy without having your phone? Have you been cyberbullied because of this technology? What about your mental wellness? Are you feeling happy? Are you feeling sad? Sometimes you go and you feel very good and you post your, your whereabouts and you check ins and check outs and your friends are happy and you put your beautiful pictures and some days you're not so happy because your friends left you and your friends are vacationing and you're not. And again, what is that doing to our mental wellness? Are we happy? Are we sad? Are we able to have any privacy? I told you, lots of businesses today, through the internet, are tracking what we do. More people are tracking what we do. Are we losing our data privacy? This is a question that we have. You know, are people accessing inappropriate material all the time? Do we have a way to prevent that? Again, what about fake news? We always talk about fake news. In the past, there was one source of news. Today, there's all sources of news. There's not just one source. You get a plenty, plenty of sources, and you have to make your choices. Again, the physical interaction. Are people stuck in rooms? Are they stuck in the virtual reality? Do we have all these virtual thousands of friends everywhere spread? Are they real friends? Are we sitting in our room just chatting, and we have this losing this connectivity with our human sense? Is this good or bad? So the question to me, technology is great. I would have never to say, because if it's good or bad, I can tell you technology is good. It's just how we use technology is what makes, I think, the difference. Whether we're sad or happy, is not just gonna be influenced by, by Facebook posts. You can be a happy person, you can be unhappy, so let's, put, let's, let's not be biased and say that this technology is really what's making us happy, what's not making us unhappy. I think what's really important, what I want to bring up here, is that we need a lot more awareness about this technology. This is something new. It's even something new to me. My mother still doesn't understand anything about the internet, so it's still very, very new to her. But it's also new to me. Every day I'm learning. I think the new generation understands it much better than we do. But I still think the key is understanding this technology. So when we talk about it, are we, are we aware that we are talking to algorithms? So the secret of social media is that 
basically they want you to engage. They like you to engage in certain posts. Sometimes you wonder, what happened to my friend that was a friend of mine on my Facebook, and I no longer see anything from that friend. Guess what? You have not engaged. You have not liked their post. You have not talked to them. You have not messaged them. So that person actually disappears. Who made that decision? The algorithm. So there are all algorithms that are sitting behind all this great technology that's adapting and learning. And there's only one thing we know that this technology wants to do in social media is that they want you to engage. And if you're not engaging, they're not interested. So the more you engage, the more they give you the feeds. Now, what is this taking me to? To me, I'm okay with it because I know if I engage, I get to see the posts from my friends. I'm gonna engage more with the friends I like. And if I don't engage, I'm losing them. As long as I'm aware, but again, this is, I think, this is what the point is. Those algorithms, again, are attracting you and feeding you posts that you like. Are we losing objectivity? Today, if I go and look up a certain topic, if I look up police brutality, guess what? I'm probably going to get fed with tons of feeds about police brutality. And then we got to believe that the police are brutal. Because what? Because the way that social media works, because the algorithms work, they're going to tag everything that has to do with police brutality. And guess what? They're going to convince us through this post, through this search, that the police is actually brutal. So again, to me, as long as we are aware how this technology is working and how we don't lose our objectivity, to me is something very important that we all need to be aware of. I already talked about the marketing piece. There's a lot of marketing happening in the background. Social media lives on marketing. They are trying to sell you everything. So today, are we becoming, are we turning people into products that we're selling to advertisers? Are you happy to give up your privacy? As long as you want to connect, you have to give up, you have to realize that some of the, something's got to go, and probably our privacy today is something that we have to give up, because again, as long as we're connected, people are watching what we do, they know what we do, where we go, where we shop, what we like, what we don't like, so definitely our privacy, but again, you just need to be aware. I'm not saying technology is evil, but I'm just saying we need to be aware of this. Are you aware that there are what we call the troll farms? What are these troll farms? There's basically an army of people that can be sitting and recruited by different organizations, again, to talk to you about different topics. We hear about those troll farms during elections. In the US, there were troll farm attacks. Basically, people were talking, they set up these troll farms to convince voters about, about a certain topic. During COVID, there were, a lot, there were a lot of troll farms that were trying to convey people whether vaccines are good or vaccines are bad. Are we aware that we're talking to troll farms? These are people recruited by certain lobbyists to give us to think a certain way. And this, for the average person, maybe you would not know that these troll farms are exist. These troll farms now go beyond just people. There are chatbots that are actually communicating with you without you knowing. So, a few things before I move to my next topic is, now that we talk about the great things about the technology, we raise some awareness on how this technology works. What you need to do for sure, from my point of view, is that you need to be in control and not to be controlled by this technology. This is my lesson or this is one of my messages for today. You take control of this technology, don't let it take control of you. You've probably heard this from lots of people, but you need to definitely dedicate. Nobody's gonna say I'm not gonna check my Facebook. So guess what? Put some time for your checkbook, for your checks. Do the 20 minutes in the morning, if you want to do it 20 minutes end of the day, and finish it. But don't be hooked. Don't be just living off your Facebook and off the post and continuing to check and continuing to post because this becomes actually very distracting from what we need to achieve. So we lose the efficiency, the speed, the great thing about this internet, and then we waste it, on the other hand, by wasting our time on basically non-value added, let's say, tasks. Take a break. They call it digital diet, okay? Unplug, go for a walk, get back to reality. Don't be stuck in your virtual friends. Go meet people, have the dinners, exercise, enjoy nature, live in the present. Don't be just too excited about, you know, doing your selfies, posting your selfies, making up your photos, looking, trying to look as great as you want. Get back to reality, get back to real life, and, and go unplug. You don't need to be always on and take the challenge, you know? We need to challenge our cognitive. Today, are we, are we just Googling about everything? I think if you want to drink water, you're gonna Google it, should I drink water? This is, this is to the extent I see people. 
This is not what the internet was supposed to be. You still need to challenge yourself to memorize numbers, you know? What if, what if your phone died and you have absolutely no memory of any phone number of any friend that you want to call? I don't think this is going to be great. And I bet you some people don't know any phone numbers. We don't memorize phone numbers anymore. So please, memorize a phone number. This is an exercise. Don't be 100% dependent. So we talked about this disruption, we talked about the good, the bad, or I don't want to say it's a bad technology, there's things that we need to be aware. But again, in 2050, between now, for me, between the 2000 and 2021, the internet was absolutely a disruption. For you, it was not a disruption. You were born with it. But guess what? By 2050, you're going to witness many, many disruptions. And you need to really think about these disruptions and how much of this we need. How do we adapt? Now we're still trying to adapt to the internet. Uh, to me, the internet is just sometimes when I go back in, in, in my mind and think, like when we first had this automotive disruption, we had cars, there were absolutely no rules. Cars didn't have any safety bumpers. We did not enforce any speed limits. We did not even enforce seat belts. So everything could go. Still, I believe the internet today is like the car. Everything goes. So we're still as humans trying to really adapt to this technology and we're trying to see what works, what we should regulate, what should we slow, should we slow it down, is this what we need? But guess what, again I'm saying there's a lot more coming our way, so we need to think of the future and we need to think of more technology that is going to be disruptive and I don't know much about what's coming, but I can tell you there's a lot down the line. This is just the tip of the iceberg. If you think internet is it, internet is just getting us started. So we're talking about more innovation, more internet of things, more artificial intelligence, more virtual reality. So today, maybe next, in 20 years, we'll all be sitting with our lenses, with our virtual reality. Maybe we will not be sitting here. Are we ready for that? Is that what you guys want? I'm talking to you because you guys are the future. You guys are gonna be part of this decision making. Is that how you wanna be? You wanna be physically be sitting with us today, or you wanna be immersed in this meta? You know, do you want to be in this hologram and be attending meetings virtually? Is that what we want? It's your decision. This is not us. The new generation and you guys at the future are going to decide what's going to work for you and what's not going to work. Again, are we ready even for more? Are we ready for robots to make surgeries on us? Do we trust robots better than we trust people? Do you trust the robot pilot? Do you trust the robot doctor? Are we ready? Is that what we want? This is the question. Do we want to put humans aside and get more and more into artificial intelligence? Let data be data driven? Where are we going to draw the line between human and machine? I think, you know, artificial intelligence is going to do more than what humans can. I can only know so much, but I'm sure that, you know, with artificial intelligence, maybe you have the greatest doctor in the world, but I can tell you, and I will remind you, that again, programs do make mistakes. I'm not, I'm not against artificial intelligence. I'm not saying robots will not be great doctors, but I'm just saying they could be not mistake free. This is just recently posted, again, using the power of the internet, using the 5G, that now they are actually doing surgeries remotely. So we can be sitting in Cairo and have our best uh, referred physician in the US operating a surgery. This is not far from reality. This is actually going to happen. So they demonstrate that with 5G, okay, this is great for humanity. There's people that don't have access to doctors. There's lots of unprivileged areas. And guess what? Now they can actually have this privilege of getting this remote surgery. So again, this is where we're going. This is how fast technology is going to be disrupted. I'm still trying to understand the disruption of the internet. But I'm telling you, in the next 20, 30 years, there's going to be a lot more disruption than what we saw with the internet. So again, we don't have to create a world, in my opinion, which machines are telling us what to do or how to think, or do we? Do we want to really be talking to robots? Maybe some of us, I don't know, I can't think for you, but maybe this in the next 30 years, people can be living with robots. Maybe that's the preferred ways of communicating. I'm not a robot person, but maybe people will adapt. Maybe they like it. Maybe, maybe robots are kinder to us than human. Is that the life we want to live? Again, I really see by 2050, we can stretch this internet and we can stretch this technology to beyond what we can think. But the question is, how much technology do we want? 
Technology is the future for sure. Do we want driverless cars? Maybe, because we can reduce accidents. We can make it friendlier on the road. We don't fight with anyone. We risk no accidents. This is great. Is that what we want? How much is too much? Do we, put, do we slow down some of this technology development? Do we say we don't need to go that far? Do we stop it at a certain point? How do we find the balance between, again, the ethical part, you know? Again, society, technology, you know, the human race. What is it that we want? Again, I think these are all questions, but with more technology, for sure, we need a lot more responsibility. I'm going to say let not technology consume us. Let's think how to make good use of it. There's a lot of disruption coming your way, so be ready. Thank you.